Uh, let's welcome in our morning guest now. Siddharth Sadani is with us. SP Prasad will just join us and Richard Jain is also now joining us. Richard, let's start with you. What are your top picks? Yeah, hi, good morning, Pankaj. Uh, Pankaj, overall we feel that the market should continue this uh, positive momentum uh, which has been seen uh, you know, since last few months. So we have uh, both the buy calls. Uh, first is a buy call in uh, HUL Hindustan Unilever. During last week, we saw the stock giving a breakout from its long-term, uh, you know, long-term resistance, which was there since last two years. So I think uh, you know this stock uh, would now see a trended up move in near term. Uh, at current levels, traders should look to go along with stop loss below 945. We're expecting level around 1045, which is 161.8 percent retracement of the previous corrective move. Second pick is a one from uh, mid-cap space, which is Titagar Wagons. Of late, this stock uh, you know, has starting, uh, started forming higher top, higher bottom formation on the daily charts. The volumes in the recent up move have started increasing compared to what they have been during the corrective move. So I think uh, you know, Titagar Wagons would be one of the outperformers within the mid-cap space. Traders, short-term traders with two to three weeks of time horizon can look to uh, buy this stock with stop loss below 120 for target around 147. Right. Uh, Siddharth, what will be your calls? Well, the first idea would be uh, Deepak Knight, right? Uh, I would say with a target of 179, it's in, uh, it is into a niche chemical play. Uh, the quarterly results were not that exciting uh, Q4 numbers on the back of their Hyderabad and Roha plant getting shut. But subsequently now uh, it is getting started. Uh, apart from that, they have a greenfield expansion in the hedge for uh, acetone and uh, uh, phenol. I think this chemical is 90% imported in India. So the company is again uh, initiating it in, uh, in manufacturing in India. That is something a first more advantage for the company. And this is a high value product. So margins also would be uh, quite good. So overall perspective, Deepak Nitride with the 18 times uh, FI18 earnings, uh, we like the company with a target of 179. The other company from the uh, cement pack, uh, I would say mid-cap cement pack, is Dalmia Bharat with a target of 3,005. Again, a company has clocked 17% volume growth in the current quarter. Uh, apart from that, 90-odd percent earning growth uh, was seen on a YOY basis. That was something uh, uh, ex excited the market. Apart from that, the, we expect that some of the cost-saving measures increase their EBITDA per tonne. And we expect 1365 beta per ton for FY19. Apart from that, deleveraging benefits, no more uh, for the capex, and good cash flows for the company. I think Dalmia Bharat expects 7 to 8 percent, or probably 8 percent growth in east and southern part of the country, and 7 to 8 percent in the western part of the country in terms of dispersals or uh, dispatches are concerned. Dalmia Bharat in the mid cap cement pack looks very interesting with a target of 3005. All right, uh, so Danya Bharat is a pick there. We also have Mr. S.U. Prasad with us. Good morning, uh, Mr. Prasad. What are your topics for the day? Uh, good morning. Uh, you know, I continue to like uh, State Bank of India. Uh, I continue to like HB, uh, HPCL, uh, Sun Pharma, uh, Redis, uh, and uh, Reliance. And the one new name which I would like to uh, put in is ACC because the merger that's being talked about, ACC and Ambuja, uh, ACC is already a subsidiary of Ambuja. Once the merger goes through, I think it will be uh, beneficial for the ACC shareholders. Forget the immediate impact of what the ratio is and what, what is the arbitrage opportunity. But on a long-term basis, A, there are going to be cost savings. So there's, obviously the economics makes sense because I'm sure there's quite a lot of duplication of costs. Uh, and secondly, you know, Ambuja is, is definitely a much stronger, financially much stronger company. So uh, all in all, it's, it should be a win-win for ACC. All right, before we go ahead, quick check of how the currency is doing. Today it's gained a third of a percent. The move seems quite significant because now the, uh, the rupee is nearly at 64 to a dollar. So a good uh, move being uh, seen in the currency and this perhaps uh, goes to show the kind of optimism we're having on the uh, inflation picture. Now for the month of April, we got the consumer inflation data and in April, the consumer inflation has come in at 3 percent. Uh, this is much better than what uh, the RBI had thought. In fact, the RBI's medium term inflation target is 4%. So we've seen uh, inflation ease quite significantly. And uh, what is even more heartening is that the core inflation data has eased. In April, the core inflation has come in at 4.4% versus 5% that we saw in March. 
We also got industrial production data for the month of March coming in. Uh, this is the revised series now. New series has come in for IIP. For March, we saw an expansion of 2.7%. Uh, in February, the same series, the expansion was about 1.9%. In January, the expansion was 3.8%. Amongst the sectors that grew well in the month of March, we saw mining up uh, about 10%, electricity up 6.2%. Right. Uh, you know, on the basis of CPI and what's happened, uh, the big change uh, will, of course, be, you know, what happens to the RBI rates and what the, what's the stance of RPI. So what a lot of economists are saying, let's start with Motilal. This is after the CPI and the IIP data, that RBI will find it difficult to resist uh, uh, to cut rates now. They won't be surprised if a rate cuts happen in June 2017. 7 June, of course, is the meeting of RBI. So that's what they are referring to when they say June 2017. IDFC says don't expect any changes in the RBI monetary policy stance. It Pranjul Bhandari at HSBC says that uh, they would expect RBI to take a note of this inflation, but at the same time, they expect them to hold on to rates. They would be positively surprised, but uh, they don't expect any rate cuts. Similar is the view from Nomura as well, that uh, considering the growth, considering the sort of liquidity in the system, they, are, they would not expect uh, any major rate cut to happen in 2017, even though the inflation data is pointing out towards a lower uh, lower start. Uh, just a quick program reminder as well. Uh, 10 30 a.m. today, you can catch an exclusive interaction uh, with Arvind Subramaniam. We'll play out this entire interaction at uh, 10 30 a.m. So that's a conversation that, of course, you would not uh, uh, want to miss. Uh, in terms of some of the stocks that will be in focus, uh, so we spoke about the macro data, what the call on India is from Morgan Stanley. Uh, some individual stocks that will be in focus, let's start with Idea Cellular. So they reported a loss, a loss of around 327 crores. Of course, for a company like Idea, you compare it on a QOQ basis and the estimates were close to 500, 550 crores. But I think that there was a strong cost control that the company has shown in this quarter. It was also shown by Bharti Airtel Limited and similar is the case with Idea. If you look at the EBITDA, 2,196 crores, that's about 27% in terms of margin. So that's a decently strong margin. But again, it's pointing out towards pressure, not the margin, the sales front. And that itself is taking the numbers lower. Uh, these are some uh, important metrics for IDEA. So subscription or the total subscription is now at 190 million, which is 2.3% higher QOQ. Revenue per minute is about 34.5 pesa. That's about a 15% decline. Average revenue per user is down by about 9%. It was expected with the sort of freebies that Geo was giving. And the overall traffic was up 10%. The volumes basically tend to go up because idea didn't match what Geo did. Even Bharti did what Geo did. And that's why the volumes went up quite significantly. And significantly for the data volumes. You can see the data volumes, which is the last column. It went up 16%. But at the same time, you have uh, the data average revenue, which went down 27%. So overall, there was a decline, even though there was a volume set off. It did not make up particularly uh, for, for the loss uh, in realizations that you have seen. Idea, uh, this is pre-open price, indicating a 35 pesa lower start, but numbers were decent and a strong cost control. Anisha is what the management did show. Yes, that's heartening for a telecom company that is beset with uh, competitive pressures. Let's uh, pull up the, uh, Titan for you. Now, Titan came out with its earnings and we saw a good 43% jump coming in in the top line. The sales were uh, slightly, you know, they missed estimates. They were only up 8% uh, or so at 1 crore piece. Now, the biggest uh, uh, plus point for Titan is that the jewelry business has seen a strong revival. Uh, it's seen strong growth. Uh, the EBITDA was higher at 272 crore piece, but they the margins contracted about 90 basis points coming in at 7.9 percent due to higher raw material cost but when it comes to the jewelry business which is three-fourths of their business actually their sales were higher 55 percent a bit was up 36 percent so for those who track this jewelry company uh, they would feel uh, that the business looks to be back on track for a reasonable amount of growth coming in in fy18 uh, there were a lot of worries about the impact of demonetization that seems to be wearing off Revenue growth, uh, the management says they see revenue growth in FI18 in the high teens. Uh, not only, and they expect to uh, maintain their current margins, not just the uh, jewelry business, even the uh, eye care business uh, did well in uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, they feel that the GST will accelerate market share gains. And there is a belief that uh, once there is a shift from the unorganized to the organized sector, uh, jewelry companies with a good brand record like Titan will benefit. 
Right. Uh, Nishan, Nestle will, uh, Nestle, of course, from the FMCG pack will also be in focus. They declared their Q1 numbers. Remember, it's an international company. They follow the calendar year 17, and Q1 is what they have declared. 2,475 crores in sales versus 2,277 crores. You had the PAT number closer to 306 crores. Now, unlike some of the other companies, they don't give out volume data. They don't give out category-wise volume data on a quarterly basis. In the annual report, of course, they say what Maggie is doing, what some of their other key brands are doing. But uh, in, on a reported basis, Basis and a quarterly basis, they don't give out that number. Uh, domestic sales are up 9.4%. I've excluded the excise duty in this, so probably this gives you a trend that at least there is a 9% growth realizations plus volumes. Sales, what the management says, was across categories. So it was a volume-led growth led by across categories. There were a couple of uh, key raw material prices that went up that took the margin slightly lower, so about 20.2%. But again, you know, there was, uh, there, was, there was nothing to cheer about. At the same time, there was nothing to worry about, so not much that one can read. Uh, into the Leslie numbers at this point of time. Let's uh, go back uh, to our guest, SV. Uh, let's start with you. What do you make of idea and Bharti's numbers now? Uh, you know, considering that uh, it was the worst, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the best ever cost control that they have shown. If the cost control is maintained, you think Street would be surprised positively? No, not really, <coughs> Pankaj. Because, see, one major change that's happening and, and it's, it's following international trend is that, see, these businesses are getting more and more commoditized. Uh, let's face it, you know, where, uh, so, so long as your data speed is fine, your, your call drops are not happening and the government has uh, uh, definitely shown the stick to these companies, whether you use uh, <clears throat> company A or company B, it really doesn't make a difference. So the, the danger for, the, for these guys in the medium term, if not in the long term, is the commoditization of these businesses and this follows a global pattern. So when you have a price warrior like Geo, who doesn't seem to uh, be really letting up, okay, he may not be giving, a, giving away freebies as much as he was doing earlier. But the fact of the matter is he is still a price warrior. So as long as that is happening, as an investor, I, I would tend to you know, keep my distance. Other, as, as, as I've mentioned, there are enough and more uh, opportunities available in other sectors. I would much rather focus on them rather than trying to uh, uh, fish in the telecom waters. Right. What will be your call on uh, the FMCG pack? So, you know, even you had Titan, Anisha just took us through the numbers. Sales are pretty good. Margins are lower. You think that's a, that's a, that's a trend across sector now? Yes, certainly. I, I, I think there's no, no question about it. See, Titan has one advantage is that uh, it's got the brand. No question about it. But again, I have a slightly different view. I think the focus should have been more on uh, things like watches. You know, jewellery is something, again, with lots of uh, regional brands and stuff like that. You have Kalyan Jewellers and others who have also grown in, in a very aggressive and massive way. So I'm not so sure. I mean, this is my... Uh, a person, if one has to look at FMCG, frankly, I would stick to the tried and tested. You know, I would look at some of the uh, MNC majors. Uh, you know, who who are force of habit. You know, whether you talk a Colgate or a Unilever or Nestle, which you just mentioned, one would much rather look at these counters uh, whenever there are dips. Uh, and frankly, these are all defensive stocks. I think that's one thing we must realize. These are not the kind of huge multi-baggers that we have seen in the past. Right, just about 34 seconds remaining. Uh, Siddharth, quickly, if you could just tell us Vedanta results today. It will be important because the stock has rallied. Of course, it would be very important and I think result can beat the estimates also. It's just because of entire metal pack is doing good and we expect uh, metal uh, sector to do good, especially non ferrous space. Right. Uh, Siddharth, I'll just come back to you. Uh, markets are about to open. That's a quick program reminder at 10.30 uh, a.m. An exclusive interaction with uh, Arvind Subramaniam. Uh, these are the first ticks for you. Hindalco 191, really no movement. ONGC, there is an upgrade which has come in uh, from Credit Suisse. That's why it's up 2%. Tata Power, 25 paisa higher. 82, 83. Orbindo Pharma, 1 rupee here and there. Ambuja Cement, absolutely flat. You have HDFC Bank, uh, flat with a negative bias. And uh, Asian Paints is on the positive side. Idea Cellular from the first tick is down 60 paisa. So it's not much in terms of movement. Uh, so not much in terms of any major reaction that one can say about Idea Cellular. 3, 3 and a half lakh shares. Has traded. Titan is down 6 rupees from the word go, so it's it's reacting to numbers and uh, margins were a miss and uh, that led to volumes being very, very high. Nestle, but just 4.99 shares in terms of trading, so it's not much that, again, it's reacting to. Uh, so Nestle uh, is uh, is on, slightly on the negative side. That's PNB housing for you, 1.5% higher, 1,354. Uh, provisioning was slightly higher, but apart from that, the numbers were in line.
Central Bank of India down 6%. There was a loss. Cross NPA increased and now the stock is down about 6, 6.5%. Looking in uh, extremely weak right now. Karnataka Bank is also reacting to numbers. It's about 3 to 4 rupees higher. 168, 169, 2-odd uh, percent higher for Karnataka Bank. Inox Wind is down 15%. Uh, numbers were clearly very, very weak and that's down 15% uh, uh, right now. 4.5 lakh shares traded. Uh, that's a quick heal for you, 1%. Let's look at Inox Wind once again. It's now down 18%. Uh, so 16.5 to about 20-odd levels. It's down about 18-odd percent and it's looking in very weak. Numbers were weak. Uh, guidance was not quite meaningful and that's taken the stock down. Uh, look at the volumes initially. That's about uh, five, five and a half uh, lakh shares traded, uh, and it's down about 17 odd percent. So it's almost uh, close uh, to a lower circuit. TVS Electronics up six percent. Numbers were looking fabulous. Remember, it's a company which benefits from the digitization theme, and that was probably seen this time. Six, six and a half percent higher. Uh, Vinity Organics, uh, not much to read in, 201 shares traded, but it's on the positive side, about 15 to 20 rupees. So that's probably only the one key takeaway from these numbers. Anisha, any other names with volumes? Um, yes, there are uh, stocks that are buzzing on high volumes, uh, uh, but names that we don't know of too much. Uh, Indo Solar is up 5.5%. Uh, uh, the entire solar space has started to buzz on Friday. Wellsman Corporation is up 5%. Kesoram Industries is up 5%. The chemicals pack again buzzing. Rashtra Chemicals and Fertilizers up 5%. Chambal Fertilizers up 4%. So these are some of the stocks to watch. Uh, there is a stock, uh, Bansali Engineering Polymer. Now, this stock is up 15% for the last uh, one week. Uh, it's a small cap, we don't know much about, but it moves on high volumes and today it's up. Some of the real estate companies have done well today in opening trade and on high volumes, HDIL, Anantraj and India Pools uh, real estate have moved up well with gains of a percent and a half. Uh, we have uh, PNB Gills down 8%, uh, 8%. Uh, Yuko Bank is down 7%, Tata Tele down 5%, Oriental Bank of Commerce down 2%. So some of the PSU bank names are coming under pressure today. Yoko Bank is now uh, down about 6% or so. Um, Ruchit, uh, this week we'll get earnings from PNB and SPI. Uh, what's your call on these two counters on the charts? What levels are you watching out for? Correction on the daily charts, it had formed a... Uh, uh, it had formed a bearish engulfing pattern, which is indicating that the stock might show a corrective move. Uh, the a crucial support from trading perspective for this stock would be 163, which was the previous resistance uh, breakout and which could now act as a support. But I think comparatively, SBI definitely looks much stronger. Uh, recently, the stock has given a breakout from a uh, consolidation phase of about two, two and a half months of, of consolidation. And on the higher side, it seems that the stock is now likely to head higher towards 314, 315 kind of levels. So within the PSU space, uh, one, uh, one stock that could you know, outperform the rest of the other uh, would be SBI. So I think if anyone wants to pick up uh, any stock from trading perspective, then definitely it would be State Bank of India. All right. Uh, so um, Ruchit is positive on Yes Bank. Um, Siddharth, uh, what do you do? Uh, uh, sorry, Ruchit is positive on SBI, but my question is on Yes Bank. Uh, Siddharth, uh, what would you do with uh, Yes Bank? On Friday, we saw uh, a big fall coming in. At this point in time, it remains stable. Uh, there are some worries about its uh, NPAs uh, declared and uh, you know uh, the kind of variance it is with what the RBI thinks should have been the right provisioning. Uh, do you think some of these concerns are uh, overblown because the management says that they've uh, you know, provided for this and there is no carryover in the current year? Right, we'll wait for the clarity further emerges from uh, the management as well as RBI. Uh, but overall perspective, we believe that it's a great company to be in. If you talk about the asset quality also, it is stable. Growth is also coming up. If you talk about loan book, growth is around 38, 39%, which is again very good. NIMS are strong. So overall perspective, the performance of the company has been good. QIP is going on. So overall perspective, we believe that we have a buy rating on the company with a target of 1700 and uh, we are positive on the company and the strategy for yes bank should be at the current time is buy on dips 
because uh, the performance can be can be good going forward and of course uh, the, the the news which is which is there i think uh, that can be a history uh, if if some clarity emerges out of this right as we what will be your view on these private banks uh, you know bs bank says that they're taking the entire impact but uh, you know there is a big divergence how do you think investors would react to that there would definitely be <clears throat> people who, uh, Pankaj, look at it, uh, you know, with a lot of caution. Because, and mind you, these are March 16 numbers. So the first concern will be how the March 17 numbers will look like. Frankly, I've always maintained that in the banking space, be it PSU or private bank, it's better to stick to the uh, leaders who have sh who have shown tremendous governance, tremendous growth. So if you talk of the private sector, you know, m m I would still continue to focus on uh, HDFC Bank, uh, Kotak and Indusind. These are the three names I, I really like uh, because in terms of governance, quality of assets, kind of growth they have shown, diversified business book, I think these three are uh, excellent names. I, I don't want to unnecessarily diversify my banking book and PSU, I've always, SBA has always been my uh, favorite. I've been mentioning this on your channel and, and I'm glad to say that our technical analyst has also said, the expert has also said that uh, it's at a breakout. So I, I, I think uh, all for the good for SBI. Right, but you know, can you just tell us that uh, SP, you know, uh, it was not about uh, you know the number of NPAs or the amount of cross NPAs. It was about the divergence that was being reported versus what RBI was saying. That is the concern because we've seen it for ICICI as well. We've seen it for Access as well. But the percentage divergence is very low. Yeah, but uh, see here, the the first concern is uh, which anybody will have, and I don't want to press the panic button is that, is it just the tip of the iceberg? I think that's the first concern you have. Now, I have a slightly different take when banks show the kind of growth that, you know, uh, uh, one of the uh, fellow panelists was mentioning. I always am a little concerned because when you talk of growth, two things happen. Does the management have the man bandwidth to manage the growth, number one? Number two is, is, are the quality of assets suffering? Because there are tremendous growth opportunities in the lending space in India. Then if you grow beyond whatever, chances are your credit quality may take a hit. So I would tend to be cautious and focus on some of the names that I mentioned earlier, rather than trying to unnecessarily diversify. And frankly, a lot of these private sector names, Pankaj, has run up a lot. Uh, you know, and, and then you look at some of the smaller banks, run up that much, much more, not much volume. So, you know, these are the concerns that I have. Right. Uh, and uh, that, that would keep, uh, I mean, the valuations that is there, that would keep, uh, uh, you know, the upside uh, limited from your own. Absolutely. So then you do the risk-reward ratio. And then you uh, you need to ask yourself the question that, you know, where do I place my bets? Right. Uh, Ruchit, what will be your call on Titan Limited? On a, uh, on, you know, a technical basis, it's opened down 2.5%, 3%. I think it's factored in the results. What would be your call from here on? It's had a phenomenal run this year so far. Yes, Pankaj, already we have seen a good, uh, you know, good run-up in the last few months. And if you observe the specifically the RSI indicator on the daily as well as weekly charts, these are now indicating a more of overbought uh, scenario. It's not necessary that the prices would correct from here, but I think uh, now for next few weeks, we may see some sort of consolidation coming in, in the stock. Even last week, we had a long uh, candle on the weekly charts whose range was 460 to 505. So I believe that uh, you know, rather than uh, you know, moving higher now, this stock would uh, consolidate for some time in the range of 465 to 505. Right. Any view on JNK Bank? It opened about 87, 88 rupees of basis of results and now it's down about 1.5%. Any view on that name? Generally, we don't see that kind of volumes coming in in this stock. Uh, even if we observe the longer term charts, then uh, during October 2016, the stock had faced a huge resistance around the levels of 90, from where the stock corrected right uh, way up to uh, up to 55. So I think uh, now after this recent up move, uh, the stock has now uh, no again approached uh, approaching the near to the level resistance of 90. So I think uh, no uh, rather than uh, no waiting for this stock uh, to show any kind of movement, it's better to get out of this stock of, uh, uh, and uh, rather invest in some other PSU uh, PSU space which are, uh, which could show some uh, positive momentum. Right, uh, J.K. Cement, let's just pull up that name. It's up around 10% right now. Again, it's a results impact that we are talking about. It's up 10-odd uh, percent right now. It's at the day's highest point. J.K. Cement, uh, about 10% higher, 11% higher now, 1189. Uh, Siddharth, any view on J.K. Cement or the cement sector? Well, JK, JK Cement is concerned. I think EBITDA per ton also may rise uh, in next uh, two years is concerned. 
uh, it's a good managed well company. I think volumes are also coming up for the company. Apart from that, the entire cement pack, uh, we are quite constructive on the mid-cap cement pack rather than being into the large-cap space. One of the companies which I have already recommended uh, earlier is Dalmia Bharat. We believe that, uh, of course, with the kind of numbers it has posted and uh, the de de leveraging play which company is going to get going forward. I think uh, that will increase and expand the EBITDA pattern for the company. Uh, it's a well-managed company. 8% odd demand growth is expected from eastern and uh, southern part of the country. So Dalmia Bharat in the mid-cap cement pack, uh, Ramco Cements, uh, Billa Corp, all these companies look quite attractive for the cement pack because of the reasons. Of course, it's uh, of course reasons like affordable homes, infrastructure, housing for all. I think this will drive the demand for cement companies going forward. All right, uh, so that's the view coming in from Siddharth. Uh, Ruchit, you've been positive on Tata Steel. Today it's amongst the top three gainers on the Nifty. Uh, it's um, above, I think, 440 rupees now, uh, 445, 2% higher. Uh, do you think it's headed to 460, 475 or um, is there a, sc a scope for some correction now? Yes, Alicia, I think uh, you know, the metal spec, uh, space have already uh, shown a good corrective move in last one month. And if you observe the broader trend for the metal space, then most of the stocks, Hindalco, Tata Steel, Vedanta, have been forming a high top, high bottom structure on the weekly and the monthly chart. In fact, this entire bull market in this bull market, this was you know led by the metal space uh, earlier. So I think uh, whenever you see such uh, uh, such stocks correcting in the bull markets, you know it's just a buying opportunity whenever they come to the support. Now Tata Steel is now trading around its 200 day simple moving average support after the recent corrective move. So the risk reward ratio is very much favorable over here. Uh, we can conclude that the downside seems to be very limited in this stock now. Uh, so definitely if uh, anyone wants to look this uh, stock from positional perspective, it's a good opportunity to go long. On the lower side, the 200 SMA which is placed around 400 and, uh, 426, 427 could be kept as a stop loss. And on the higher side, I think uh, pullback move should come up to 474 in very short term. All right, so that's if you coming in on Tara Steel. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on NDTV Profit. Uh, as you go, please leave us with the disclosures. Your disclosures, uh, Mr. Raprasad. Yeah, uh, uh, my uh, disclosures continue to be remain the same. Uh, State Bank, I have a whole small holding in State Bank of India, Hindustan Petroleum, Sun Pharma, and uh, Ambuja Cements. Richard, your disclosures. I don't personally hold any of the stocks that you've discussed, but similar recommendations that we have given have been given to our clients also. Siddharth, your disclosures? Personally, don't hold any of the stock discussed, but clients and organization must be holding. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on NETV Profit.